Hello bristles! How have you all been? It has been many a moon since I have been before the camera. And uh, it's taken a while, but I finally got some corn coming to the channel. And we're gonna shed some blood. Oh yeah. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. Because this has taken quite some time and I just want to out it away. Anyway, first things first, gonna be painting some Blood Warriors for the Blades of Corn. And it's gonna be in three parts. I'm not sure quite how it's gonna be broken down. All I know is that the first part is gonna be the main armor. And specifically, I'm gonna be painting the what are they called? Specifically, I'm going to be painting the Skull Fiend Tribe. I've been messing around with these uh, corn boys since I got the first Age of Sigmar starter box. Kept changing my mind about how I wanted them painted. First, I wanted them as the Iron Horde or whatever they're called. The just plain metal fellas. And then I was like, ah no, sure I'll go to traditional red, but no. My heart lay with the Skullfiend tribe. So without any further ado, let's don our axes and don our war paint. Blood for the blood god! First colour we're going to be using is a, a dark bronze colour. I'm going with Decayed Metal by Scale Colour. Uh, but you can of course use Warp Lock Bronze from Citadel, which is what I would usually use. I'm trying some different paint ranges out just to, you know, experiment a bit. That over a neutral primer. Uh, I'm using Mechanica Standard Grey spray paint from Citadel and we're just going to cover any of the details we want to be the gold such as the trim and any kind of details on the weapons or any little trinkets. We don't need to be careful as you can see here I'm being very messy I'm getting it all over the mini. What we really want is just a solid base colour and uh, here we go finished looking good. Next up we're going to take a Thonian camo shade and just slap that on all over. Don't let it pool too much, but we do want it to have a nice strong effect. The reason why I'm using a Thonian camo shade opposed to something brown like Agrax Earth Shade or Seraphim Sepia or Reikland Flesh Shade is because I prefer the rustic kind of time-worn feel. Then I'm gonna take Elven Gold Ordinarily, uh, if I was doing this, I would be using Gehenna's Gold from Game Citadel, Games Workshop. I considered Dwarf gold, Dwarven Gold, but I feel like Elven Gold is closer to Gehenna's Gold. Doesn't have to be an exact match, just close enough. And I'm just gonna dry brush that on all over. Don't go too heavy, but uh, as always, you know, with a dry brush, start off light. If you want it stronger, go again. Um, and there you go. Next, for dry brushing, we're going to use Chainmail if it's Citadel, or I'm going to use Thrash Metal from Scale Color. I really love this paint, it's fantastic. And Scale Color, I cannot praise them enough for their coverage and uh, just range in their metallics. Next, moving on from dry brushing, going to go onto an edge highlight for all those trim areas. I'm going to be using Heavy Metal from Metal and Alchemy Scale Color but I would recommend Mithril Silver if you still have some of that lying around. If not, whatever bright, nice bright metallic you have should do. Um, I'm pretty sure Stormhost Silver is a bright color, but I personally don't use Stormhost Silver. I just, it doesn't work the way I want it to. So hence the hunt for some 
different brands of metallics. So yep, just edge highlight with that. And then all the chain mail areas and anything else we want metal, gonna put a layer of thrash metal on there before we move on to the next part. So the chain mail, any little rings, they have some rings under armor plates just on the edges and some spikes. So any of those details, thrash metal or lead belcher would be a good choice from Citadel. Just make sure and get a good layer. Next, we're going to bring a bit of warmth back into the armor panels. We're not going to lose any of that rusticness we got from the Athonian camo shade. Going to bring a bit more warmth back and uh, bring it back towards gold and also shade the silver areas a bit. And we are using Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. Just slap it on all over everything we've done so far. So the rustic gold trim and the metal areas. When using washes, you can use it exactly as you do other paint in regards to pulling the pigment to where you want the color to be strongest. So don't let it pool too much. If you think you've put too much on, just wipe your brush on some kitchen roll or tissue, whatever you're using to dry your brush. And just touch the brush to where you have deposited too much of the wash and it will soak right up. Keep this in mind particularly on flat areas such as the flat of the axe where I have pulled the pigment more towards the bottom of the axe for uh, just to make the flat surface a little bit more interesting. with heavy metal or whatever the brightest silver was you used from your range of choice and just going to put a dot highlight on any of the sharp edges and you can see here where we have the kind of fold on the thigh armor just a very thin straight line down there you don't want to highlight every edge just the brightest points where the the light will be reflecting from The wash is dry, we can uh, come back to our other metallics with thrash metal or lead belcher if that's what you used for the initial base coat of your chain mail and metal areas. And we're just going to layer up but leave the recesses shaded. And when it comes to the axe head, we're going to stay to the higher parts of the weapon and try and pull the pigment up towards the top of the flat of the axe. Stay away from where we have let the wash have its uh, strongest impact. Also just pull the edge of your brush along uh, all the edges of the metallics just to give that uh, edge highlight. This is around the entire axe head. Next, heavy metal or whatever your brighter metal paint of choice was. And the same again, but less surface area. Leave some of the previous color behind. So just where we want the most light. And on the flat of the axe again, less surface area, pulling up towards the top.
don't forget to highlight your edges. Not so much as uh, we did with the previous layer. Yeah, there we go, looking good. Let's step away from the metallics now. Gonna take Abaddon Black or whatever black paint you like. And with the Abaddon Black, I'm just gonna fill in the panel, the armor panels inside the trim. Just be careful not to get it on any of that work we've done so far. You might notice now, um, this trim uh, recipe or technique can be used for any Chaos faction. Doesn't have to be this one in particular. If you were doing standard Horn Bloodbound, you could easily just fill in the armor panels red. Also, you, you could use this color scheme for Black Legion. Just be careful, thin your paint, do a couple of layers. I think this took about two or three layers for me to get a, a good coat, just so that we don't have any brush strokes and uh, it's a nice smooth finish. I also use the black paint on the haft of the axe. This is where I'm gonna get a bit lazy. Well, we can afford to be lazy here because we've got that nice trim that uh, is so iconic for Chaos. Um, the head on this particular uh, unit, Skullfiend Tribe, so that's where most of our attention is going to be. I'm gonna take this chance with the armor plating on my basic troops to take a nice easy approach and be lazy. I'm gonna take uh, black metal from Scale Color or lead belcher from citadel and we're just going to highlight finally highlight any sharp edges on the black armor anywhere where the armor is folded like there on the thigh plate and then as well as that we're going to use the same color to add some micro texture some uh, chipping on the armor just to show a bit of wear and tear because these are blood warriors they're not being careful they're getting into the thick of it they're making bits of fellas and they're not afraid to take a few slaps on the way in too. So their armor's getting dinged up and stuff. So it's just a nice little thing to add. Doesn't take much more work than just edge highlighting the sharp edges. We can easily leave the armor at that. I'm gonna revisit it later in another video just to make it pop a bit more. And in a future video when I do a corn character, I will do a more advanced technique for painting black. But this is just for my battle line troops because there's a lot of them. Not too happy with how the, the silvers have come out, uh, especially on the axe head. So I'm gonna take a bit of Agrax Earthshade, thin it down with Lamia Medium and slap it on all over. When that's dry, I'm gonna come back again with less Lamia Medium so that it's a bit stronger and do the same thing again, but not all over. We're gonna do about half the surface area that we did before and then for particularly dark areas, I will take a tiny bit of pure Agrax Earthshade and just drop it in there. Now let's tackle some leather. I'm gonna take some Rhinox Hide and slap it on his wee booties and on his belt and the leather wraps on the handle of the axe. And we're gonna grab some Null and Oil and slap it on his booties, just on the boots. Leave the, uh, the belt and the wraps a different color because we're gonna do something a little different from them. Once that Null and Oil is dry, gonna take Rhinox Hide again and Edge Highlight, leaving the previous layers in the shadows. And you can see here on the cuff of the boot where it falls down, I layer up where the sun would hit the most or whatever light is above would hit the most and uh, just leave the underside of the cuff alone, except for the edge highlight. Following on, same technique as before, but with Doombull Brown uh, on the boots. But this time, not so much layering, just uh, more highlighting. Um, some areas where there's large surface area, we will do a thicker one. Just examine the part you're painting and uh, where you think should be a bit brighter. Then on to Bugman's Glow. We're not going up with a brow brighter brown, you'll notice, because um, this is leather. It's made from hide. And since it's chaos, you don't, chaos, uh, you don't know if it's the hide of your friends or their friends or some kind of hunted animal. We're gonna use something that looks like a flesh tone.
Gonna do the same again, but smaller surface area with Cadian flesh tone. And as well as that, on the very edges of uh, the boot cuff, I'm gonna just do some small strokes downward to show where the boot may have uh, scratched and uh, some of the finish is coming off the leather. Now that that layer is done, we're going to leave the boots alone for a few minutes and take some corn red. And we're going to do the same techniques as we did with the boots, but on the belt and the leather wraps using corn red. Don't forget to tin your paint, uh, take your time and uh, build this up in layers. To highlight that, we're going to take Bugman's Glow again. Now I'm feeling like it's a bit too stark at the moment, too stark of a jump. So I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade because it's got a nice uh, warm reddish tone to it, even though it's a brown. And I'm just going to slap that onto the wraps and the belt. Now, I feel like there's a little bit too much punch in those boots and they're detracting the eye downwards when we want it to be brought upwards. So I'm going to take, take a Thonian camo shade and just slap it on the boots to kind of tone them down a bit. Again, we're sticking with some colors we've used before, so it matches nicely with the trim. Also, when the Reichland Flesh shade is dry, gonna take a, a small brush now and Cadian Flesh again and do a very fine highlight on the belt and the wraps. Be very careful here and try and do it as fine as you can. Bit hard at first, but practice, practice, practice. I don't get it perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And we do the same thing with the boots, but just a, a very tiny area there. And focusing on uh, where the creases on the boots come to a point. Don't forget those parts at the front that are tucked in on the armor uh, where the belt is. Uh, I nearly forgot a couple times. This is how it's looking. Don't mind the helmet. I messed up the eyes here, so I just painted over them. And I really need to repaint this helmet anyway, because after painting this one, I painted the rest of them a different way, which I much preferred. I'm not happy with this one, so you will see that in a future video. And that's how I've painted the armor and leather on my Skullfiend Tribe Blades of Corn. Hopefully you can learn something from this video, or it inspires you to paint some Skullfiend Tribe, or try something new. Anyway, that's it for this video. Tune in next week for part two, and then part three, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway. Hope you found something useful in this video. Uh, look after yourself, look after each other, be good to each other, and have a lovely week. 
Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Keep safe. Uh, I don't remember what I used to say. Uh, it's been so long. <laughs>